Welcome to part 4 in this video series, Using the Config Module AOI, where we will learn how to use the Config Module AOI. We will also learn how to import the Config Module AOI into the PLC project. We will then learn how to use the Config Module AOI to configure modules that are to the left of the COM module in the valve stack. Finally, once all of the modules are configured in the COM module, we will be able to toggle the valves to the right side of the COM module using the PLC tag bits. Before we get started using the config module AOI, we're going to need to be familiar with the physical layout of the modules that we've selected. Here in this graphic view, we have four modules that are to the left of the COM module. You'll need to be familiar with which modules you've purchased and need to set up to be configured. One of the easiest ways to determine that, if you have power to your valve stack and your IP address is set, is to use Google Chrome to use the web config utility that's provided by Mac. In this particular case, our default IP address is 192.168.1.25. This brings up the MIO67 web config utility that we can use to determine what the COM module believes that the modules that are attached to the left of the COM module. Here we can see a summary of the modules that are attached. In slot number one we have an analog I.O. 0 to 10 volt. This is a voltage analog I.O. module. Here in slot two we have an analog I.O. 4 to 20 milliamp amperage module. Here in slot 3 we have a power plus module or was referred to as a valve driver. In slot 4 we have a digital I.O. module. We can also use the web config utility to check the statuses of the module. Down below we have the backplane module status which shows that all modules are operational. We will also need to determine the type of digital I.O module that's been configured using the dip switches. Here the web config utility has identified that this module is set up for PNP input and output. You can also determine that by looking at the dip switches inside of the module. Here we have a video view of looking to see what the dip switches look like. We can look up the dip switch status by referring to the manual. The dip switches are set 0, 1, 1, which indicate a PNP input configuration for bank A and a PNP output configuration for bank B. This will be important later to understand how the digital input module is set up so that we can select the right config module setting when we set up the AOI in the PLC. Once we've determined the physical layout of our module, we're ready to work in our PLC project that we've been using in this video series. Here we have our sample PLC program called Mac that we started in the beginning of the video series. We're ready to import our very first add-on instruction. Add-on instructions live over here under the controller organizer tree. To use an add-on instruction, or AOI, we right click on this folder and select import add-on instruction. If this is the first time you're importing an add-on instruction, you can import an add-on instruction while you're online with the PLC. You can also import an add-on instruction if you're offline and then download the project into the PLC. Since we're already online, we're going to go ahead and import while we're online with the PLC so we will select import add-on instruction. In this case we want to browse to the folder that we've downloaded from the MacValves website and inside the zip file there should be a folder that has AOI exports. AOIs are files that have an L5X extension and particularly the one that we're going to be working with first is the config module AOI. We will need to click on this and select import at the time of this video series, the config module AOI is version 2.0. This is the one that we will be importing and working with. An import configuration panel will appear that tells you 
and confirms the version that you're going to be importing and also the owner of the AOI, in this particular case, Mac Vows. We're going to say OK to this. Once an AOI is imported, it will appear under the Add-on Instructions folder, which then shows you the logic and parameter tags that are associated with it. Normally, you don't have to mess with anything inside of the parameters, local tags, or logic. All of the Mac Valve's AOIs are unlocked, so you can view the logic inside of the block if you choose to. You can do this by double-clicking the logic to examine the latter logic that was written inside of the AOI. If this is your first time working with AOIs, AOIs basically appear on the function toolbar at the very top of RS Logics 5000 or Studio 5000 software. You can click on the add-on bar to ac access the add-on modules that you've imported or AOIs. In this particular case we need to start a new rung and then we can drag and drop the AOI onto a rung. Here is the beginning of importing and using the config module AOI. We can also drag and drop AOIs from the folder. If we click on the folder and drag and drop it onto the rung, this imports the AOI the same way into a ladder logic rung. We'll go ahead and delete this second copy here and start working with this particular instance that we've imported. So next let's take a look at what the config module AOI does. If we go into the controller tags, and open the valves.c configuration tag name and we browse to the dot data structure we can see that the configuration structure needs the add-on modules defined. The definition of the add-on module requires a hex value be written into these word values. There are four word registers per add-on module to set them up properly. The config module will do this seamlessly for us. In order for the config module AOI to execute, we're going to need to create an examine on instruction. The examine on instruction needs to toggle this AOI only once to write the values to the proper config area of the Ethernet IP tag. We can create something simple in our sample project by just naming the tag toggle. In order to create our first tag in Allen Bradley, we right click on the name of the tag and select new toggle. In Allen Bradley we can choose how we want to create the name of this particular tag by data type definition. In this case we want a boolean data type which is basically an on off state. We will be using this toggle tag as a temporary examine on instruction to execute this block. We'll go ahead and create that tag now. Now we're ready to set up the tag names that we need for the config module AOI. The first option that we need to configure is an instance tag name. It may be a good idea to name this instance something that's meaningful to you, such as if we have multiple valve stacks, it might be a good idea to name this station one, station one valve stack, for example. Let's go ahead and type in station one config module AOI. This particular name is a tag name that's associated for just this instance. Like we've recommended before, let's right click on that and create a new station module tag. This will create the correct data type which is the MIO67 config module data type. We'll go ahead and create this. The next three tags that we need to create are the Ethernet IP target tags. In this particular case, we have named our MIO67 valves. So we can start to type the word valves and use the pull down arrow to access the rest of the tag structure. We can go ahead and expand the valves.c.data and double click that to select it. We may go ahead and copy the rest of these down and then change just the C to an I for input data. 
and also the O for output data. The last step in setting up the config module AOI is to go ahead and put in the correct number here that is in reference to the physical layout of our valve stack. If we forgot the physical layout, we can open up the MIO67 web config tool by using the IP address to access its menu. And here we can find a reminder of how the physical layout is set up in the valve stack. If we recall, the very first module was an analog voltage module. We can see here by this little help file here that is attached to the instance config module AOI that analog voltage is a 10 so we will want to enter a 10 into this box. The second module that we have is an analog current module we can enter a 9 for that selection. The third module that we have is a power plus module that is an 11. The last module that we have is a digital input PNP in PNP output which is a 4 for a selection. This completes the config module AOI front panel configuration. So now we're ready to download our sample project into the PLC. We can do this by selecting communication download. Once the project is downloaded into the PLC we can switch it back into run mode. And here we can double check to make sure if our config module AOI is working properly. If we go into the controller tags and expand the valves.config.data structure, we can see that there are no values written into the PLC to tell the PLC how each of the add-on modules are configured. Let's go back to the rung of ladder logic that we've configured. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and utilize the toggle bit that we created and we're going to right click on it and select toggle bit. There is a keyboard shortcut that we can use if we highlight the toggle bit and select control T. Once we toggle this bit on, the AOI becomes active and it executes. It executes by confirming with an enable instruction output here on the right. You'll also see that the AOI confirmed that we configured a total of four modules. There are 12 that can be configured total for this particular config module AOI. Once we've written the configuration to the PLC config tag, we no longer need to enable this AOI. We can leave this wrong false for the remainder of our project. We can also go into the controller tags and can confirm whether or not the configuration wrote. Here we can see that there are some values that have been written in between add-on modules 1 and 4. These values are shown in decimal by default. We can go to the c.data and select hex to change it to a hex values. These hex values should reference the same hex values that are in the UI173 manual provided by Mac. We see that this configuration has been written and now the valve stack has been fully configured. In order for the configuration to take effect, we will need to power cycle the valve one time. Another way to confirm whether or not the config module AOI is working properly is with to use the web tools utility once again. If we go to the status tab, we can see that outputs valid, input valid, and config valid are not true. They're basically in a false state. The reason that these sh that this shows as a fault state is because we have not power cycled the valve stack yet. Once we use the config module AOI, we must power cycle the valve stack in order for the configuration to take change. Once the configuration has taken effect, the PLC will then know and identify and communicate with all of the add-on modules to the left of the COM module. Let's go ahead and power cycle the valve stack now. Here we can see the valve stack is rebooting and now it's starting to communicate with the PLC again once the IO OK light is a solid green light. If we go back to the web config utility screen and click refresh, we can now see that the output, input, and config statuses are all valid. Once the outputs are valid, 
we will now be able to utilize the solenoid control output in the controller tags. Let's go into the controller tags and look at the valve's output. Here in valve's output.data, we have four words of information here that control each of the solenoid valves. Up to 32 solenoid valves can be toggled on or off from directly from the Ethernet IP tag. In a future video, we will be using the solenoid control that will take ownership of these particular words here. Since we're not using the solenoid control AOI, we can go ahead and ensure or toggle the first solenoid output. In this particular demo that we have, we have 32 solenoid valves that are connected in a double valve setup. So we can go ahead and write a value of 1 to solenoid 1. That particular solenoid turns on. We can also control solenoid 2 and so forth. Optionally, you can control the valves this way without using an AOI if you, if you elect to. Now that we have confirmed the operation of the solenoid outputs, we are all finished with this video series.